freeloaders. How do you manage them? At the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to last week's video because this is a kind of follow on. People, um, I was talking about giving your services away um, for free and people came back to me and said, yeah, but how, how do I actually manage these people? How do I say no to these freeloaders? It's particularly difficult as somebody who has an altruistic heart, wanting to serve others, wanting to help start up businesses, wanting to help people manage their health um, through uh, career coaching, whatever it is that you do. In times of crisis, uncertainty, financial pressure, it is difficult to say no to somebody who comes to you and says, but I'm unemployed, I've just lost my job, or but I'm just starting up in business and you know how difficult it was when you started out and why can't you help me? They're really tugging on your heartstrings and I know how difficult it can be to say no. The problem with that, however, is that you're devaluing yourself. You end up feeling rubbish about yourself. You're devaluing them because they will never understand the value of what it is they you're providing them with. But most importantly, you are going to be triggering all those old money stories about it is not OK for you to earn a good wage. It's not OK for you to earn money. It is not OK for you to be wealthy. Wealthy people are greedy people and all that stuff that you have been telling yourself potentially for a long time. All that kicks in and that can just pull you down even further. And in that space, you serve absolutely nobody. Because even if you are providing stuff for free, it's like, oh, crikey. You know, there's this constant conscious um, balance that you are trying to, to work with between helping somebody. Yes, I've got to help them. They're unemployed or they're only starting out and poor person. And crikey, how am I supposed to pay my own bills and put food on the table at a very basic level? So it is important that you do learn how to manage. And all of these things I'm going to um, give you now, three things I'm going to give you now, they're going to require some consideration and you're not going to feel comfortable necessarily um, doing them. But for the sake of your well-being and your business, then I would encourage you to choose at least one of them and take action. So number one is when you're having a conversation or maybe somebody's contacted you over Facebook or LinkedIn or WhatsApp, you know, very informally. Uh, could you just give me a, a hand with this? Could you tell me what to do with this? I remember when I started out, oh, crikey, could we just go for a cup of coffee? <laughs> I just want to pick your brains. No, that doesn't happen anymore. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for getting in touch. Um, I don't do this type of work over DM or, or social media or maybe email or whatever it is. This is a link to the services and packages I provide. Uh, please do take a look. Let me know what you think would work best for you. And uh, we can organise a, a 20 minute question and answer call and make it very clear. It's a question and answer about the services and the packages. It is not about providing free advice. Now, if you decide you do want to offer a complimentary um, consultation or, or a little bit of advice or, or whatever, make sure that you have a few tips, just like I'm giving you on this video, a few standard tips. Do not get into the space of answering direct questions, because again, that is picking your brains. That can be a very slippery slope. And all of a sudden you find yourself, you've been speaking for an hour, and you've given everything away for free. <laughs> That's no good. So decide on which tips you are going to um, provide in that space. And there will be standard questions that people ask you every single time. So that number one really is thank you for getting in touch. I, you know, I typically provide, um, I typically charge for this type of work. Here's a link to my services and packages um, and then book a time for us to speak or I typically charge for um, this type of advice. Here's a link um, for you to book a, a 20 minute question and answer call so that you can potentially find out more about what it is I offer or just be ready with two or three tips that you know, are go you know, that everybody asks you like I'm doing in this video. Number two, create a form. A form is enough 
to frighten off a lot of freeloaders. Thank you for getting in touch. I'd love to be able to help you. Before we start talking about my services, about my packages, could you please just answer these few questions so that I understand a little bit more about your business and get a feel for whether, you know, I'm actually the right person for you to be talking to. Like I said, many people will just, oh, cracky, no, can't be bothered and they will leave you alone. If it is somebody who's genuinely interested, they will complete that information. And you need to be asking them questions such as, what do you expect to get out of our work together? Um, how much are you prepared to invest in yourself? Or um, if you knew that working with me would change your life forever, you know, would you um, be prepared to invest in yourself? Ask them those questions, ask them for those answers and uh, see what comes back. And then again, you can book a 20 minute Q&A call potentially just to talk about um, options. Number three, this is a little bit different. You should already have a payment plan in place for your um, for your packages, for your services. We are living in an age now where um, people yeah, there, there are additional bills to be paid. Prices are going up still. And a payment plan will help many of your clients to be able to say yes to you. Now, when I talk about a payment plan, I still think, I still believe, and I've done, you know, I've been in this position myself. I still think it's important to get that stretch from the person that wants to work with you, to get that yes from them and a deposit is going to be absolutely key. Like I said, I've stretched many times myself to be able to, to do that first thing. If you are offering a payment plan, of course, you need to understand that there it, it can be a risky business. Um, all sorts of details um, that I talk about in, in my coaching program. But a deposit is going to um, get the buy-in, if you like, from the person who wants to work with you. Now, you may have, have a payment plan and somebody may still say, I just I just can't do it. I've got kids, I've got a car. Um, I don't know, all the stuff that people have to pay for. And one thing you can say to them, although be prepared, you know, it is a risk. One thing you can prepare to them, say to them is, you know, what would um, what would a good payment plan look like to you? That deposit must be there. That stretch must be there. That commitment must be there. You can't give away. Um, you, you, I'm going to say you can't make it too easy uh, for somebody, because if you do that, then again, the commitment, the investment, the buy in isn't going to be there. If this is somebody who genuinely wants to work with you, get that deposit. OK you know, what do you suggest? What is your payment plan suggestion? You can still say no. It's a risk I'm prepared to take. I know that if somebody has paid that deposit, it is a risk I'm going to um, believe that that person is operating from a place of integrity and I am willing to take that um, on myself. At the end of the day, if it's, um, if it's a coaching program or if it's ongoing services, if they don't pay, they don't get the services. But I don't want you to be operating from that place. I want you to be going in from believing, supporting in that person that wants to work with you. I know that as a woman in business, and I've said this so many times before, it's not about me anymore. It's about, you know, it's about being a role model. It's about encouraging more women to step up, to be those trailblazers, to scale their business, um, to potentially, you know, also be employing more people. This It's not just about the business. It's about so much more. And I know that as a woman in business, I know how fabulous you are. I know that fabulous potential inside of you. So those are three things that you can do to weed out, if you like, those freeloaders. First of all, thank you so much for getting in touch. Here's a link to my services and packages. Let me know what you think would be best. Let's get on a call for 20 minutes where I'll answer your um, questions. Number two, get them to fill out a form. Think about which questions. And, you know, they don't have to be wishy-washy, whatever. Hard-hitting questions. What do you want to get out of a call? You know, if we were to work together, how much um, would the investment be worth to you? 
those types of questions. And number three, have a payment plan. Always, always take a deposit, which is going to be more than a monthly payment. But potentially, if you get the sense that that person, they they really want to work with you and you really want to work with them, ask them to come up with their own payment plan. And if it's acceptable, you, acceptable to you, say yes. If it's not, say no. It's not a problem. Until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay fabulous. If you are ready to take that next step to up level into that inner trailblazer, change maker, soulful innovator, scale your business, become an employer, become a role model for other women in business. And you would like to know how, if you'd like to be a part of my Radiate coaching program, please do get in touch. There's a link below for you to book a call for us to speak. Until we meet again, as I said, stay fabulous. Loads of love and bye for now. 